How's it going, guys? So I just want to address some obvious, glaring truths that anybody can understand if they simply approach things from a common sense point of view and get rid of all assumption. Just look at the way things work mechanically and use your common sense from there. So I'm going to give you a few proofs that prove unequivocally that the Earth is not a spinning ball flying through space. My first biggest point is the old Loran system that they used during World War II. Now this system could calculate where you were based on line of sight trajectories with radio waves down to like three meters. Now what most people don't understand is if you're shooting a radio wave across the surface of a globe, eventually you're going to be shooting that radio wave straight off into space. Now what a lot of Globers want you to believe with the old Loran system is that these radio waves are bouncing off of the ionosphere. Well, that's impossible because if that was happening, it would lead to point divergence so basically what that means is when you shoot this laser off and it bounces off of the ionosphere, right? It propagates that wave in a way that makes it unable to give you an accurate reading. Therefore, the Loran system has to work off a line of sight and it cannot reflect off of anything other than the object or the receiver. Otherwise, it can't accurately triangulate where you need to be in order to give you your location. Now what most people also fail to realize is all of the mathematics for the Loran system is based on a flat earth. It's all using plane trigonometry. They don't account for the curvature of earth at all because it's a linear it's it's a linear system. Now there's no way around this. You can't argue it. It's fact, okay? Now, what I want to ask you is, logically speaking, if the Loran system was that accurate, and it's that fundamental of a, it's, it's an easy technology to understand, right? Anybody can understand how radio waves propagate with enough basic cursory research into it, okay? Now, what I'm asking you is if you were in charge what makes more sense? Would you use the proven Loran system that you know works, that won you the war, or would you start launching stuff into space and complicating things a hundred times over and expounding on the cost over a hundred times? Now they've done, done cost analysis as to what it would cost to run the GPS system off of the old Oran system and the studies show unequivocally that it would save over a hundred times on the cost yet for some reason they want us to believe that they're putting satellites into space now what's funny is AT&T laid a whole bunch of cables back in the day all over the floor of the oceans connecting the continents in the northern hemisphere now, when they started to put stuff up into outer space in order for there to be a communication system like GPS and satellites for TV and telecommunications and all of this, it had to go through Senate, it had to go through antitrust, it had to go through a whole bunch of stuff, right? Now, it's interesting because AT&T had a vested interest in keeping things the way they were because they laid all of this cable at their own expense. Now what's funny is, when this was put before the House of Representatives, they asked for AT&T's opinion. And AT&T came straight out and said, this is nothing more than a modern representation of the oceanic cable system that we've already laid. They didn't say it was an upgrade. They didn't say it was a new system. They didn't even admit that this technology existed. Rather, 
they pointed out the fact in black and white that this was nothing more than a representation of the technology they already knew existed between Lorraine, their cable systems, and balloons that are being put up in that that are being put up into the sky in order to, to in order to act as relays, uh, relay points. Basically, think of it like Wi-Fi. You need a booster in your house if you have concrete or whatever because it can't get through the signal. So what you do is you set relay points through your house, right? It's basically the same thing they're doing with these hot air balloons or these uh, helium balloons, high altitude weather balloons that they're sending up. So they're attaching equipment to these balloons, which is admitted, and the patents are there that duplicate the exact bandwidth that satellites are supposed to operate on, which I believe is 700 hertz or something along those lines, 70 hertz, something like that. Don't quote me on that. All I know is that it's the same exact frequency and there's not a coincidence when it comes to this, okay? And what most people don't want you to know, or they, they just don't know in general and they're not willing to do the research to admit is that there's at least 10,000 balloons over our head that are put up in the sky by NASA all the time. Why is this? Why are you investing all of this money to send weather balloons up with technology that duplicates exactly what satellites do and this is admitted, this is admitted in patents, they admit that this is what they're attaching to these balloons. Not only that, but these balloons have crashed all over the world. There's video accounts of it from the Congo, in Africa, to the deserts, to Russia. These balloons come down all the time. They're always NASA balloons and they always have technology on them that duplicates what a satellite would do. Now my question for you is, why does all of this exist? Not only that, I want you to think about how a ham radio works, right? Now, it works through line of sight, right? Now, of course, some ham operators, depending on what radio frequency you're using, are, uh, are depending on bounce and scatter and all of that stuff. However, if you're DXing, say, from Colorado, okay, you could very easily run a station in Antarctica and what's funny when it comes to that your line of sight is in all ways south so how is that possible now all of these questions are something that you need to look into yourself but what I'm telling you is if Loran works by line of sight and they admit that it does because it uses plain trigonometry in order to triangulate your position and they're sending up all of these weather balloons that have satellite technology on them with repeaters that just happen to put out the same bandwidth as a satellite, right? And if you look at your satellite dishes, none of them are pointing directly up into space. In fact, if you go into countries like Argentina where they're hacking this signal, a lot of these dishes are pointed parallel to the ground, which leads you to believe that they're picking up on a receiver that's on the ground, AKA an antenna, okay? None of this would be possible if you lived on a globe. None of this should happen if you lived on a globe. That right there should be proof enough that satellites are a huge anomaly in this system because you do not need them. You do not need to spend all this money to send something into space because the technology already existed in World War II. We've been sending weather balloons up with repeaters for signals on them since World War I. Since World War I, the technology's existed. Why the hell wouldn't we still be using it today if it was that easy to do, right? And on top of that, it's a hell of a lot cheaper to do. So why not fool the citizenry into giving you a shit ton of money to send stuff into space when you could easily spend a hundred times less to put weather balloons up that accomplish the same exact thing? Not to mention all of these cables that are running underneath the ground, underneath the water, and we're laying more and more of them every single day. Why are we investing billions of dollars to lay cables on the surface of the ocean floor 
when we could easily just send another signal through existing satellites. Now, another thing you have to ask yourself is, if GPS isn't the Lorian system, now, the Lorian system has maximum distances is about 1,500 miles, without repeaters, of course. Now, it's funny, when you get into the Southern Hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere drops GPS, you drop GPS communication. There are certain parts of the Southern Hemisphere where if you go down there with a, with a receiver that's supposed to get GPS signal to tell you where you are, it won't work. It won't work because there's no GPS coverage down there. Now, it just so happens, if you look at the coverage for the old Loran systems, you happen to run into the same exact dead zones. So the same exact dead zones that you have for the Loran system, because you don't have a repeater out there, because you don't have an island out there to have a transmitter, right? This just so happens to be the same exact area that you lose GPS signal. I wonder why. That's rather suspicious, isn't it? Now, if you think about it, if we have geo geostationary satellites positioned at equal distance above our head, right, to supply a GPS system signal, it should work anywhere on the planet, no matter what. No matter what. But it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. Fuck, I can't get, I can't get cell phone signal in the valley right up the road from my house, but you're, you're expecting me to believe that GPS signal is valid everywhere when I can prove unequivocally that it's not. I lose GPS signal on my phone all the time. If those satellites existed like they said they did, there's no way in hell you would ever lose GPS signal anywhere on the face of this earth. Anywhere. But you do. You do. And not only that, if you could get a GPS signal in the southern hemisphere, you'd run into serious problems because there's a hell of a lot more land down there than they're accounting for. Because if you start sailing down there, you're gonna realize real quick, you're gonna come off about 12 to 18 miles off of your reckoning every single day. Meaning, you are covering more distance than the map you are reading is telling you. Meaning there is more surface down there that you are traversing than the map is telling you. Meaning your observations don't match reality. And this is exactly why you run into communication problems down there. Because there's a vast amount of distance that's not being accounted for. And the Loran system can't possibly, can't possibly transmit over those distances without a repeater. Now, the funny thing is, is it would be easy enough for them to send some weather balloons up in the southern hemisphere to act as repeaters. Now, the question is, why don't they do that? Because it's not necessary. You and I don't travel in the southern hemisphere. What they don't tell you is you can't take heavy fuel beyond the 60th degree parallel. So what does that leave you? That only leaves you 30 degrees of longitude that you can traverse in the southern hemisphere. As soon as you cross the 60th degree hemisphere, you enter the Antarctic Treaty, and you have to obey a shit ton of rules that they give you. You can't bring heavy fuel, you can't litter, you can't eat food on deck. There's all kinds of crazy rules you have to follow. Now, why? Why are they hiding all of this ocean from us? Why are they not letting us explore this ocean unhindered without us giving them our itinerary? And on top of that, before these rules existed, can anybody explain to me why Captain Cook circumnavigated Antarctica and clocked a distance of over 60,000 nautical miles? Not only that, it took him four years to do it, right? It took him four years to do it. Should be impossible. There's no way in hell it's taking you four years to circumnavigate Antarctica at a distance of 60,000 miles when it's only supposed to be 16,000. And on top of that, the quickest trip around the equator <coughs> is like a third of what it takes to circumnavigate Antarctica. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can simply look with your own two eyes and see. Doesn't add up. These are just a few simple proofs. I'm going to end it with one more. They say that the Earth is a pressurized system sitting next to the vacuum of space. Well, if you want to prove to me the Earth is a spinning ball, all you have to do is give me one experiment that shows me a pressurized system sitting next to a vacuum without a barrier in between the two without affirming the consequence and pointing back to the spherical Earth model. If you can do that, you might just turn me into a Goldberg again. I don't see it happening.